So hello guys, welcome back to Engineers Code. In this video, we are going to discuss about process and what are the different states of process, how process is loaded into memory and the process memory space, you know. And uh, we will walk. I will walk you through each and every state of process from the beginning to the end and what are the components and the uh, components of the operating system that are responsible for it and are involved in it, right? So make sure to watch this video till the end and I hope you are watching the other videos of the operating system playlist because they are very very important and are linked to each other right. So let's start. So before starting this let me introduce you to the process. So what is a process? A process is just a program or a set of instructions you know which are independent on each other instruction and you know they run independently and are called a process it is basically a set of instructions right for example if you write a program in c to add two numbers it is also called a process because it will run independently uh, independently first for example if you run if you write two programs one to add and one to subtract then those two programs will run independently right and uh, obviously you write in different files right so any program that is under execution is called a process right uh, for example a, a process when goes to the memory for execution that is called a process right so how a process starts and what are the different states of process but before that what are states uh, for cpu to recognize where the process sits and how process you know is managed it maintains a state a state is nothing but an integer constant, right? For example, uh, whether it is running, whether it is ready to be executed by the CPU, whether it is blocked, whether it is finished, whether it is new, all these states are managed by uh, managed by the CPU, right? And these are nothing but integer constants that are stored in the process control block or what we call as PCB, right? So if I can quickly show you, this is for the next video. So this is the PCB and the PCB contains the process states, right, which is the numeric constants. And I will also explain you all, all these in the next video, right. But in this video, we will see what are the states of process and how a process execution looks like. Right? So let's suppose you have a program when or any application, whenever you double click or open the application, you know, what happens is the program is there in the secondary memory, right. So whenever you click it, the CPU or basically the loader. So what is loader? A loader is less responsible to move the process from the secondary memory to the primary memory, right? Which is the RAM basically. So that, that is the responsibility of the loader, right? Okay. So whenever you click, the loader takes the program from the secondary memory, which obviously loader is, the, uh, is a software, not a hardware, which sits in the CPU and it loads it to the RAM, right? And in the RAM, uh, you know, the memory is allocated, the memory is been allocated by the memory management unit, right? So there are different units of CPU, the arithmetic logic unit, the control unit, the MMU, I hope you remember all these, you know, we have discussed about it in the previous videos. If you have not watched, please watch the, uh, them first, right? They are very, very important. So after the memory is allocated, you know, then the process is considered in a new state, right? This is the state where the process is just entered, right? And after that, the process control block is created. So what is the process control block? Process control block is something which the CPU needs for and stores information about the process, right? For example, if I show you this, this is a, you know, process control block in which there are different uh, different components of the process information, right? I will uh, explain you each and every component in the next video, right? But uh, PCB is something which the uh, which the CPU stores, right? Uh, information about the process, which is stored in the kernel stack, right? Obviously. Now, after the uh, PCB is created, you know, all the memory updates, location and pointers of the executable file are you know, uh, allocated, the virtual memory is created. Now, what is virtual memory? We will discuss in the next videos how virtual mem memory works and, you know, this is in itself a very big topic and very important one also for your software engineering, right? 
सो मेक श्योर वेन एवर आई विल अपलोड दिस वीडियो अबाउट वर्चुअल मेमोरी इट विल बी अज ऑफ वीडियो ऑब्वियसली यू मेक श्योर टू वॉच इट एंड लिसन केयरफुली राइट इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट टिल देन जस्ट जस्ट नो दैट देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड इज वर्चुअल मेमोरी and it is created and updated and the locations are updated whenever the memory uh, process is created right after that there is a global process table right so whenever you want to see the list of process or some uh, uh, any you want to uh, know the information about any process the linkage between the process there is a process id for each and every process right so for each and every process there is a In, uh, there is a data structure maintained by the operating system to know what processes are running right which all processes are running currently and it is stored in the process table right this looks like the format where the P, uh, process id is stored against the process control block and other stuff as well this is the uh, this is a very vague view of the process table right so after it has been created after all the memory allocations are done the pointers uh, pointers are updated the virtual memory is created the operating system or the loader basically checks for any external dependency uh, for example if you you know if you load some package or any other dependency which is not present then it checks for that and you know loads that first and after loading all of this if if present obviously then it moves to the ready queue so what is ready queue and what is ready state so ready state is a state in which a process is ready to be executed but you know the cpu is very fast and it executes process uh, you know very uh, very quickly right so obviously it will uh, there will be multiple processes in the ready queue right because uh, uh, for example a process a is being executed till then you open let's suppose two program so obviously uh, there has to be a storage and you know there has to be a way in which the cpu picks the processes right so there are different scheduling algorithms for that that is another topic in itself how how the processes are scheduled uh, to be uh, to be executed for example i am process a and you are process b so if for example i came first and you came second and you got executed first then obviously th that is a problem for me because i came first but in scenario 2 let's suppose i am process a and you are process b i came first but you have a you know uh, you have a high priority over me for example the uh, the user wants something to be done quickly rather rather than to be done by me for example mouse click whenever you click a mouse it should happen instantaneously right it should not happen with a delay sometimes it happens with a delay but normally or generally it, does, it should not right so there are different types of scheduling al algorithm that picks the process to be executed from the ready queue but uh, you know we we have not discussed about multi -proce uh, multi processing system and you know all the other things right yeah we have we need to dis discuss that i will make a video on that but but just uh, just uh, try to imagine right so uh, let's suppose a process is being executed and uh, there are four processes that needs to be executed right so where they are stored they are stored in the ready queue right and obviously the loader loads the loads the process into the ready queue or what we call as the process pool right so there are two types of ready queue right one is the ready queue that is managed by the operating system another one is something uh, or the uh, process pool or the ready pool which is managed by the software itself for example node has its own ready queue right Where, uh, which is managed by it only uh, i hope you know about node right if you don't know just uh, search the internet what is node right so there are various softwares or various programs that manage their own ready queue right or process pool but there is a process pool of the operating system as well where process are stored so obviously it is a logical not a physical queue right and i hope you know what is a queue there are different approaches of a queue like fifo right first in first out that is one but there are different ways in which we can select the process that is all, there is a segment in operating system called a scheduling right we will study after this 
when we will you know study when we have completed about the process and the thread right so let's suppose p1 p2 and p3 you know are there uh, are there in the ready queue to be executed now it is the uh, it is the role of process scheduler it is a uh, it is the software which schedules and selects the process to be executed right so as you can see it schedules select the and it also selects the code to uh, which code to send for example your uh, your system has eight cores or four cores you know uh, it is the cpu's processor right a core is cpu's processor so the process scheduler selects the process from the ready queue and decides which code to send based on availability based on uh, you know other criteria as well and it is the role of the dispatcher to perform a context switch so what is a context switch you know uh, it is a transfer from the ready state to the running state so whenever a process moves out of the ready queue and goes to the you know goes to the cpu it is considered as running state obviously this is being up, uh, updated by the loader right so the, the loader changes the state of the process to the running state and you know the dispatcher sends the process to the uh, execution right and how execution is handled it is handled using instruction uh, instruction cycle i have explained you about instruction cycle whenever when i was discussing uh, discussing about you know cache memory right and how it works and uh cache yes cache memory obviously so uh, here it is written that uh, uh, there are various algorithms that the process scheduler selects for example the uh, uh, high priority processes get selected first arrival time burst time you know first in first out we will discuss all the scheduling uh, algorithm afterwards but basically uh, now what is the context switch whenever the process is uh, changed its state from ready state to running state there is a context switch performed like uh, till now it was in the user mode but now if required if required it will change its context uh, and it will run in the kernel mode right which uh, uh, in which it will have its own privileges right i hope you remember what is the difference between user mode and kernel mode that is why all the vi previous videos is very very important because i can't explain you each and every topic in each and every video right the video will get too long so i hope you are you know about context switch you know about the instruction cycle okay i can explain you the instruction cycle but obviously i will not explain con context switch in this video because i have already discussed two three times before uh, prior right so after ready state when the process scheduler selects the process and the dispatcher sends to the running state what happens is it is executed in cycle it is executed in a cycle which is known as the instruction cycle which moves in fetch decode and execute uh, okay sorry the instruction cycle was discussed in the interrupt video obviously yeah because it sits with the instruction cycle so uh, what it does it fetches the instruction it decodes it and you know it, then it executes it right and the mode at which the instruction cycle will work is determined by the mode bit which is obviously it is written here used to determine user kernel mode not accessible by user level program it is accessible only by the kernel level programs right and in between if there is any interrupt that has came that is uh, that are high priority you know high priority process then it is handled by the interrupt cycle right i have discussed in depth about you know the fetch decode execute cycle let's let me show you right interrupt yeah see what is the cycle we have uh, we have seen a cycle refers to a sequence of activities or events that take place in the system these cycles represent repetitive process or patterns that help manage system resources handle tasks and maintain system operating operations something that repeats itself right that is considered as a cycle so there are different types of cycles the hardware level cycles and the software level cycles so instruction cycle is what is called what is uh, you know categorized as hardware level cycle because hardware is been included the actual execution is done by the cpu right so yeah so this is the instruction cycle right in which we have the fetch cycle in which there is instruction fetch unit the control unit how it fetches the instruction uh, what is the use of system bus and you know how it request the uh, request the uh, process block or the 
or the chunk of operations that is to be required that is to be executed from the ram then how decoding works you know and how a code extraction is there and what are the what are the instructions we have all discussed that and after that how it is been executed by the alu and the, how register is updated we all have discussed what is offset what is address calculation we have discussed that right so make sure to watch this video you know it is very very important and after that how instruction cycle works in between then what is instruction and when it, what happens when an instruction uh, interrupt sorry interrupt cycle interrupt occurs we have also discussed that so make sure to watch this video right okay so after performing the instruction cycle let's suppose there there is a there there are two states left so one state is that let's suppose after the process is completed it is obviously in the completed state and then all the memory uh, all the registers that are allocated to the process are released right now what happens is sometimes let's suppose you run uh, you want to you want to uh, read all the files in your uh, file system right let's suppose you write a program to write uh, read all the files in your file system so that is a very you know heavy task that requires a lot of time so if it it remains in the instruction cycle forever then you know the other processes will wait and your system will will be very very slow right so that is not an optimized uh, way right so what it does is it moves the process or the running process into a block state right block state in which it goes for any input output operations any heavy heavy computing operations right which does not require the cpu a process uh, a program which does not require the cpu but needs to be running is uh, uh, is in the it is the state is changed to the block state right and after it has completed it in its input input output operations what it does the cpu or the operating system moves the block state to the wait queue right after after wait queue now after wait queue what it does is it sees and it or uh, now also it uh, it you know apply scheduling algorithms to see which code to send uh, see the ready queue for each and every core there is a ready queue right if your process if your operating system or if your computer has eight cores then there would be eight ready queue right so it decides who decides the process scheduler decides the process scheduler decides <coughs> from the wait queue to send the process to which ready queue either this one or this one right and again after that the scheduler selects the process and sends to the instruction cycle and it and the cycle goes on so that is how a process is started and that is how it is ended so what are the different states that we saw we saw the new state with the ready state the running state the completed state and the block state right and so what are the different components that are responsible for it the process scheduler the dispatcher you know the loader how instruction cycle sits between uh, between all of these uh, what happens when it goes for input output how wh when are the registers released right what is ready queue ready queue is something uh, or a process pool it is a set of processes that are ready to be executed right it is very important for interview as well right your uh, your study should not be interview specific but you need to know these right these are very important because uh, other than the operating system the software also have these kind of concepts right uh, various software so you need to understand if you want to develop you know that kind of software and not just write some apis and consider yourself as a developer right so that is very very important to know in, in depth about your operating system how a process works right and if you want to understand it in a better way just simulate this process uh, in your you know what uh, let's suppose in javascript you can simulate this process right after you learn various scheduling algorithms and you know how memory um, is managed how virtual memory is managed you can make your own stim uh, simulator right about this let's suppose i i can create a process i can the process i can make the process to running state uh, for example i can double click the process and it will move to the running state i can decide whether it contains an input output operations or not you know 
that will help you to understand this in a more better way right so i hope you are able to understand what is a process you know how process is loaded into memory what are the states of process and process memory space oh i guess the process memory space is in the next is in the next video right so till then i hope you enjoyed this video if you guys are enjoying this playlist please feel free to like subscribe and share with your friends so that they can also learn these kind of cool concepts right and obviously thank you guys for your immense support wait till the next video right so okay guys bye bye see you in the next video